my name is Gaia. We're talking about how the technologies that are inside of uh, fab labs, scientific fab labs in this case, can be also useful for the schools to teach various STEM or STREAM subjects. We're talking now about laser cutters. Laser cutters are interesting appliances that can be used to cut various kinds of materials. We usually use wood or plastic, acrylic plastic. The plastic sheets can be cut in whatever size and uh, shape we might need and can be also layered and glued together to contain something. We have three examples of scientific uh, props, let's say, that can be used in the schools and that can be created using a laser cutter but can also be made using normal kinds of uh, saws and so on to cut the pieces of plastic. This is a smaller version that just has three layers of acrylic plastic and inside some glycerin. When the light shines through it, underneath we can see projected on a surface how the light reacts. Passing through the glycerin, we can see how it behaves and how the various points create a lens projecting very interesting shapes on the floor. This can also be achieved if you find some kind of plastic transparent container that can be closed, as could be a, a bottle of water that must have a flat surface. So if you're able to find uh, some kind of bottle in which you can put some uh, glycerin, you can easily recreate this kind of experiment with uh, almost uh, no um, difficulties. Here we have a bigger version. So this is the bigger version that we made to fit on a table. The principle is absolutely the same. We've got three layers of plastic, two for the outside and one uh, disc that is just for the border. They have been glued together using a specific kind of glue that is just for acrylic. And inside we've got the liquid glycerin. We need obviously a light source. We can use the sun if av available, that is absolutely perfect. Otherwise we need some kind of light source that is not too much diffused. So some uh, kind of uh, LED or uh, even better other kinds that are uh, particularly focused lights. The liquid inside can have to be tilted afterwards, so it coats all the surface of the disc. And when we turn it upside down again, you can see the small lenses that form on the surface of the disc and you can see how the light passing through these kinds of lenses forms these uh, reacts in this way on the surface. My name is Carlo. I want to show you other application of laser cutter and transparent acrylic plastic to make exhibit and demonstration tools for physics. Uh, after seeing what we can do for optics with the caustic generator, I want to show you what you can do to demonstrate the behavior of crystals, uh, how to make a crystal, how to uh, understand the facts and properties of solid state materials. Uh, in this case, we will use uh, the same start uh, kind of structure that is made as a sandwich of uh, acrylic plastic. Instead of having glycerin inside, we have metal balls, stainless steel balls, usually uh, used for bearings that you can buy at a low cost in big quantities. Here we have more than 500 uh, stainless steel balls, uh, four millimeters of diameter. Those can simulate atoms or molecules of a, a solid compound. Uh, and we can see how the crystal lattice is created when a solid material cooled down and became solid after being liquid. By agitating our device, we can make it uh, all the balls moving freely, uh, especially if you put them in horizontal uh, position, of course. And so they will simulate the behavior of a liquid or a melted metal, for example, where each atom is free to move in every direction, every position of space. 
but uh, when you start to uh, stop, uh, well, well, when you don't move it again, let's say, after a while, all the balls will find a fixed position and they will have a random position. This is the same behavior of a, a, a solid substance that is amorphous, but or very little crystalline uh, structure, very little uh, periodic position of, of particles. But if you start to uh, agitate slightly again, what you see is that uh, domain crystallization are created. So an uh, area of the surface where the molecules or atoms are in a periodic pattern. They repeat each other at the same distance from each other in a very uh, constant way. Uh, but from one area to another, you have different angles of repetition and different patterns. So those are called crystallization domains and we will see them very well uh, if you use the light projection through our device. This is another low cost object that you can create and that uh, easily um, depicts something that usually is not visible. And so it can give an idea to students of something that on a book is much less interactive. In this case, we used magnets. These are neodymium magnets and they have all been placed in the same direction. So they repel each other. We've got three layers of acrylic plastic, as you can see, and a fourth piece that is used as a slide through it. When I apply a force to it, we can see the behavior of the magnet. Let's, let's think that each magnet is a molecule of a gas. When there is no force applied, they can uh, arrange themselves with the maximum distance from one from to the other. But when I add a certain kind of force, I add a pressure inside, the volume decreases and I have to add more and more pressure so they can they have to stay near one another because they repel each other in this moment. When I release the, the force, there is no more pressure. They immediately come back to the beginning stage and they have the maximum distance possible from one to the other.